Hey guys, today I'll show you a horror thriller TV series named American Horror Story Season 4 Freak Show. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The drama begins in 1952 in the small town of Jupiter, Florida. A milkman, going about his daily rounds, noticed that one of the houses hadn't collected their milk for three days. The door was ajar, so he decided to play a peeping Tom, taking a peek inside to see what was going on. To his horror, he discovered the body of a woman lying under the dining table. Hearing noises upstairs, he continued his investigation and stumbled upon a remarkable monster that caused him to wet his pants. After the creature was taken to the hospital, a woman named Elsa showed up. Elsa was the owner of a freak show circus. In the hospital room, she met the monster, a pair of conjoined twins named Dot and Bet. Despite their shared body, with one bladder, three kidneys, four lobes of lungs, and two hearts, their personalities couldn't be more different. Dot was strong-willed and aloof, while Bet was shy and restless. Elsa's purpose for visiting was to persuade the conjoined twins to join her freak show. Not too far away in the suburbs, a couple was enjoying a romantic but smelly moment. The man promised his girlfriend a surprise and went to get something from the car. That's when a clown, mask-wearing and carrying a bag, appeared out of nowhere, saying that he preferred to be called Twisty the Clown. The woman thought the clown was the surprise her boyfriend had mentioned, so she played along until her boyfriend returned and confronted the clown. Without a word, the clown knocked them both out cold. The boyfriend was killed on the spot, and the woman was abducted. Meanwhile, Elsa returned to the hospital to ask the conjoined twins how their mother had died and how they had been injured. The twins recounted a terrifying tale of a robbery turned murder, but many details didn't add up. Elsa called their bluff, accusing them of concocting a story based on movie plots. She urged to come up with a better story before the cops show up. Twisty the Clown struck again, breaking into a home and murdering another couple, kidnapping their little boy. A series of murders unfolded in the town of Jupiter, putting the citizens on edge, everyone fearing for their own safety. The clown kept the woman and the boy captive in an abandoned bus. Meanwhile, the conjoined twins seized the cover of darkness to escape from the hospital, but were found by Elsa. After some investigation, Elsa pieced together the events of that fateful night. It turns out that Bette desperately wanted to go to the movies, but their mother forbade it, saying they were monsters who must stay hidden away. In a fit of rage during their argument, Bet grabbed a knife and accidentally killed their mother. Later that night, Dot, in a punitive fury, stabbed her sister. Elsa told them that if they wanted redemption, they should join her freak show, promising they would become stars. So the conjoined twins joined Elsa's circus, with Bet feeling hopeful about the future, while Dot saw only deeper despair. The members of the freak show were all unique individuals. A familiar man with lobster claw-like fingers was known as Jimmy, a central figure in the troupe. Jimmy's mother, known as Bearded Lady, acted as the manager of sorts. By the next day, posters of the conjoined twins were up, drawing sneers from passers-by. This public scorn enraged Jimmy, touching on his long-standing insecurities. The man with the short arms, resembling a seal, was called Shorthand, and the tall woman beside him was known as Tall Lady. A mini-girl came to inform Elsa that a wealthy patron had booked a private show for the evening. Elsa was delighted, feeling vindicated in her decision to recruit the conjoined twins, confident that they were indeed a wise addition to her show. That evening, a man came knocking. He was the detective in charge of investigating the murder of the conjoined twins' mother. The detective came to forcibly take the twins away, suspecting them of being connected to several recent homicides. Jimmy heard the commotion and came out, insisting that it couldn't have been them. The detective, upon seeing the twins, declared them outright monsters. Jimmy retorted that no one had the right to call them monsters. More freaks gathered around and the detective threatened to shut down the show the following day, claiming that Jupiter Town would not tolerate such freaks. In a swift motion, Jimmy ended the detective's life with a knife. Soon after, the show began with a private audience. A mother who booked the show did so to cheer up her son. This lady, wealthy and willful, had a son called Dandy, who is somewhat twisted in nature, quick to anger and impulsive. None of the performances caught his interest until the conjoined twins appeared, which seemed to invigorate him. Since it was their first show, the twins had no act. They just stood there. Elsa closed the show with a song. The wealthy mother wanted to buy the twins' sexy bodies to entertain her son at home, but Elsa refused. Bet and Dot also expressed their desire to stay. 
Elsa proclaimed they were a family here and would not be separated. After everything settled down, Jimmy organized the burial of the detective, warning that anyone who bullied them would meet the same fate. Later, in Elsa's tent, she confessed to Bearded Lady that she brought the twins not for the show, but to attract more spectators for herself, hoping to become a star everyone adored. She questioned if her actions were selfish. Bearded Lady comforted her using her words, but not her beard, assuring the beardless Elsa of her success. After Bearded Lady left, Elsa removed her prosthetic legs, revealing that she was also a person with physical disabilities, but with a strong will. The next day, two more police officers arrived to investigate the disappearance of their colleague and to inform the troop of a new curfew due to the recent murders in the town. The curfew meant residents could not leave their homes at night, which Elsa realized would cut off their livelihood, their nightly performances. Meanwhile, Twisty the Clown was still lurking in Jupiter, his murderous spree continuing without pause. In the brief time of the conversation, two more lives were claimed and sent to meet Satan. In the evening, they exhumed the body of the detective with the intention of burning it, destroying any potential evidence. The police badge wouldn't burn, so Jimmy decided to keep it on his person. Later in the day, a muscular strongman arrived with his chicken wife, seeking to join Elsa's troop. They had previously been part of another circus and were quite experienced and somewhat famous. Three months earlier, the strongman's wife named Desiree, who was full of hormone desires, had been caught by the strongman being cheating on him, which led to a man's death, forcing them to flee for their shitty lives. Desiree was also a person with physical differences, quite pronounced ones. She had three breasts and was intersex. Elsa initially did not want to take them in, but considering the recent appearance of a murderer, she needed a muscular bodyguard, so she reluctantly agreed to shelter them. Elsewhere, Dandy's mother came across the clown, who was wandering aimlessly, and invited him home to keep her son entertained. Dandy was instantly captivated the moment he saw the clown. Bearded Lady found the strong man, revealing that they were once married, meaning her beardless son Jimmy was the strong man's child. The strong man wasn't a person with physical differences, but he carried the gene. Unfortunately, Jimmy just inherited the lobster claw hands. The strong man had once attempted to kill Jimmy, but Bearded Lady had chased him away at gunpoint. The strong man assured her he hadn't come for her and their child, and only after hearing this did Bearded Lady leave in peace. In another scene, the conjoined twins were rehearsing their act. They couldn't just stand there every time. Dot volunteered to sing, but couldn't carry a tune. Desiree suggested they could open beer bottles with a bang or shoot ping pong balls, but neither suggestion sparked any interest. Jimmy asked Bet what talent she had, and when she replied she had none, he encouraged her to just give it a try. To everyone's amazement when she sang, her voice was like an angel's, truly a celestial sound. The strong man praised her, predicting a great performance the next day. Elsa was puzzled and asked if the curfew had ended. The strong man replied it hadn't, but suggested they could perform in the afternoon. Elsa firmly stated that a freak show must be at night to maintain its mysterious allure. This disagreement led to a rift, with the strong man declaring no woman would be above him and that he would go post advertisements for an afternoon show. Elsa could tell the strong man had intentions of taking over, thinking to herself that this big-headed man would be a significant problem. At Dandy's home, he had the clown perform a show with a toy while he was rummaging through the toy box. During that time, Dandy also sifted through the clown's pockets and discovered something horrifying. It's a human head. The clown then knocked out Dandy with a bottle, and Dandy hurriedly fled for his shitty life. While the strong man was out posting advertisements, Jimmy and a group of people went to a restaurant. This group rarely interacted with others and didn't know many social norms. They even went so far as to take food directly from others' leftovers. Upon noticing this, the strong man slapped one of them. Jimmy stood up for his friend, which led to a fight with the strong man, leaving Jimmy bruised and battered. The clown returned to his hideout where he hid his previous two victims, but he had no idea that Dandy had secretly followed him. There, the victim woman found a piece of wood with nails in it and struck the clown, then fled with the victim boy. The clown's mask fell off during the hit, revealing his exceptionally large and terrifying mouth. The victim woman and the victim boy split up to escape. The victim woman ran into Dandy and desperately asked for help, but Dandy kidnapped her again and handed her over to the clown, mockingly saying that if he couldn't even keep an eye on people, how could he expect to have any fun? Meanwhile, the clown also captured the victim boy. In the next scene, Jimmy returned to tell Elsa that the strong man could no longer stay with them. He showed Elsa a poster where the strong man's name was prominently featured in the center, while Elsa's and the other's names were in a small line at the bottom. Elsa declared that the strong man had to leave. 
Jimmy then took out the deceased detective's badge and stated that he would handle the matter. Under the strongman's organization, the daytime show took place as scheduled. Bet sang a song that stunned everyone, while Dot appeared particularly awkward, interjecting with poorly timed remarks out of obvious jealousy. Elsa also felt a sting of envy. If Bet became the star of tomorrow and stole the spotlight, how could Elsa's own dreams of stardom come true? The next day, two more police officers arrived. Elsa inquired about their business there. The officers stated they had received an anonymous tip claiming that the missing detective had been killed by the strongman at their location and asked for the location of the strongman's tent. Elsa pointed them in the right direction and the officers began their investigation inside. Clearly, Jimmy was the one who had made the report. The police found nothing in the strongman's vehicle but discovered the badge in a dwarf's car and took the dwarf away. It seemed that the strongman had found the badge Jimmy had hidden and placed it with the dwarf instead. That evening, while Bet was asleep, Elsa whispered to Dot, fueling her jealousy by saying that Bet was trying to take the lead and she shouldn't let her do that. Elsa told Dot that she was the real star and then left a knife by the bed. Later, the police drove by and dropped off a sack. Jimmy opened it to find the dwarf's cold body and broke down in tears. The scene shifts to a man named Stanley, posing as a doctor, accompanied by his partner Maggie, pretending to be a secretary arriving at a freak show museum. Using a goat fetus sewn with a cat's jaw, the two attempt to pass it off as the baby of Bigfoot, aiming to sell it to the museum. However, the curator instantly sees through the ruse. An employee comments that it doesn't matter if the doctor is a fake, as long as he can bring in genuine freakish specimens. They'd be willing to pay a premium since attendance at the museum is dwindling. She suggests they could visit a freak show and perhaps find a body to use. Soon enough, Halloween rolls around, a time when something significant is bound to happen. Bearded Lady, diagnosed with late-stage liver cirrhosis and given only a year or so to live, is understandably devastated. Inside the tent, everyone is reveling in the upcoming Halloween celebrations. Jimmy quietly digs a grave, but upon returning to the tent and seeing everyone so joyful, he can't help feeling bitter. In an attempt to honor a fallen comrade and to vent for Jimmy, Bet yells out, questioning the sanity of the group for celebrating when they've just lost a member. She suggests they should have a performance today in memory of the dwarf, rather than indulging in festivities. At this moment, Bearded Lady steps in, declaring that they cannot perform the freak show on Halloween because of a terrifying legend. It tells of a 19th century nobleman named Edward, a virtuoso in music, chess, calligraphy, and painting, but with one flaw. He was a freak, with a second face on the back of his head that whispered hellish murmurs incessantly. Edward tried to drown this face but failed and eventually went mad. His family had him committed to an asylum. Over time, the second face persuaded him to do horrific things. One night, he killed a guard, escaped and joined a freak show, but found no happiness. On one Halloween, he snapped, killing everyone in the troupe before hanging himself. The myth goes that performing on Halloween would summon the ghost of Edward, who would then have to take a freak with him. That afternoon, Maggie, the woman who now posed as a fortune teller under their plan, arrived at the freak show, presumably looking to secure a job. Dot hadn't decided to kill Bet, who asserted that her aim is to work hard, earn money, and then get separation surgery. They can't be happy like this. Dot warned that one of them might die if separated, but Bet argued that the other would find eternal bliss. Maggie, after buttering up the circus owner Elsa with excessive praise, spun a tale about a black-haired man behind Elsa's stardom, then took a dramatic fall, successfully securing her a job from Elsa. On the other side, after an argument with Desiree, the strong man ran into his old lover, Bearded Lady, and they chatted using words but not tongues. Bearded Lady asked if he had ever been loved. The strong man denied it but suggested he might have been a good father if he hadn't left, to which Bearded Lady retorted that Jimmy must never discover his paternity. On Halloween night, Dandy donned a homemade clown costume and scared people with a knife until the butler accused him of acting like a madman. Dandy, knife in hand, dared the butler to believe he'd do it, but the butler, head held high, challenged him. Dandy stormed off, unable to follow through. Accompanied by Jimmy, Maggie covertly called her partner Stanley, admitting her infiltration into the freak show, but confessing her fear of the deformed, which thrilled Stanley, who hoped to sell their specimens for profit. He then went off, seemingly confirming his homosexuality by cavorting with another man. Meanwhile, Twisty the Clown had once again broken into a home and kidnapped a boy for his amusement. 
Inside the freak show, Elsa told the conjoined twins that a fortune teller had predicted she would meet a patron who would revitalize her career. She demanded a rehearsal, telling the twins to step aside. Bette proclaimed that they were the true stars and deserved a raise. Elsa scoffed at their request, reminding them not to get too proud over a little applause from a single song and promptly told them to get lost with their twisted bodies. The conjoined twins left, disgruntled, and Elsa began her rehearsal, singing unaware that today was Halloween. As a result, her singing inadvertently summoned the ghost of Edward. Seeing his black hair, Elsa thought he was the exact noble person destined for her and sang with even more passion. Bearded Lady was alone in her tent when she suddenly saw a female ghost in fat and an eerie green mist on the ground. Then Edward appeared to flex his double faces. Startled, Bearded Lady asked who had summoned him. Edward said it didn't matter who did the summoning, they needed to take a freak with them or they wouldn't leave. He asked Bearded Lady to share her tragic story and would then decide whether to take her. Bearded Lady then recounted her past as a once-admired comedic star who switched to dramatic acting on the strong man's advice, leading to financial ruin when no one came to see the plays. Desperate for money, the strong man streamed the birth of Bearded Lady's child, calling it Freak Baby Show, with Jimmy born in such a spectacle. Afterward, the strong man encouraged paid photos with the audience, an act Bearded Lady deeply regretted. Looking at Edward's sidekick ghost, Bearded Lady knew she would become one of them and resignedly asked to take her with him and she deserved this fate. However, Edward didn't take her, possibly because she was too beardy for him to amuse himself. So he went off in search of someone else instead. At the same time, Dandy arrived at the clown's hideout and happened to see him dragging back a boy he had just captured. Dandy was thrilled and exclaimed that there's a new toy to play with. The scene shifts to the summoned Edward beginning his search. He comes across Shorthand, who admits that everyone sees him as a monster. If no one will love him, he'll make the world fear him. So he tattooed his body from the neck down with terrifying images. Edward tells him that he is not the one he's looking for. After questioning others and finding none suitable, he arrives at Elsa's tent. Seeing Edward, Elsa mistakes him for her destiny, saying she has been waiting for ages. She even asks him if he likes her new singing style. Edward, taken aback, retorts to stop her nonsense, saying that he's here for her story. Seeing the face on the back of Edward's head, Elsa quickly dismisses him, asking him to get lost with his terrifying double face if he is not her patron. But Edward's sidekicks swarm in and disassemble Elsa's prosthetic leg, forcing her to reveal her darkest secret. Cutting to another scene, Jimmy and Maggie's car breaks down on their way back, and they're close to the clown's base. The victim woman takes the opportunity to knock the clown off guard and then makes a run for it from the vehicle. Jimmy and Maggie, unable to hail a ride, decide to walk back. That's when they see the clown recapturing the fleeing victim woman. Jimmy decides to tail the clown to see if there's a chance to rescue the victim woman. Maggie, left with no other option, reluctantly follows suit. The two followed the trail to the clown's hideout in the woods. Through the car window, Jimmy was shocked to discover that the clown was the culprit. The missing people were all hidden here. Suddenly, Dandy emerged from behind and with two swift hits, knocked out Jimmy and Maggie. Meanwhile, Elsa was in the midst of sharing her own story. It turns out that she was once a call girl in a German military camp, dealing with some extremely perverse clientele. Tired of the digressions, Edward interrupts her, asking her to start with the story of her leg. Elsa then recounted how one day she was unexpectedly summoned by several men. She hadn't thought much of it, assuming it was business as usual. But to her horror, they sawed at her legs and even filmed the ordeal, dubbing it an SM feature film. Fortunately, Elsa was rescued by an American soldier, which allowed her to escape to the United States and save her life. After hearing her story, Edward declared that Elsa is the one he had been looking for, asking her to prepare to come with him. But just as he was about to deal with Elsa, music was heard in the background. It turns out the clown and Dandy were having their own fun. They had tied up all their captives, pretending to put on a show, with Maggie placed in a box as part of a beheading magic trick, though they intended to actually saw through her neck. At a critical moment, Jimmy broke free from his restraints and knocked out Dandy. The clown applauded the action, saying, Well hit! During the applause, Jimmy freed Maggie and urged everyone to run. The clown then locked Jimmy in the car. That's when Edward arrived, asking the performers to tell him their story. The clown removed his mask, revealing a fierce, gaping mouth, and began his tale. He had once been a naive and honest clown, adored by children whom he loved to play with. As the clown's fame grew, it sparked jealousy in others who conspired against him, spreading rumors that he was up to strange things with the kids. 
The clown, thinking it was a joke, denied any wrongdoing. He saw himself as a good person. But the rumors of child molestation spread through the circus, and he was soon ostracized. Returning to Jupiter Town, he passed time by crafting toys from trash and promoting them to toy stores, only to be told by a store owner that they were worthless and wouldn't sell. A child in the store cried when the clown tried to prove the appeal of his toys. The store owner recognized him as the rumored molester and threatened to call the police if he didn't leave immediately. Distraught, the clown attempted to end his life with a gun, but despite the blast, he survived. Over time, he turned dark and became a murderous psychopath. Edward praised his story, saying even demons would weep at his tale. So he asked the clown to come join his ghostly band of freaks, and with that, he killed the clown. Jimmy, watching from the car, saw the clown's spirit emerge, mouth healed, content to join his kindred spirits. Dandy failed to catch the other escapees, and upon returning, he found the clown dead. Overcome with sadness, he picked up the clown's mask and put it on himself. It seems he might continue the clown's legacy of murder. The next day, the police arrived at the scene and questioned Jimmy to see if he knew who had been the vigilante. Jimmy said he wouldn't tell them even if he knew, blaming them for the dwarf's death. The police said they were not responsible for the death. It was the thugs in prison who had killed him. After Jimmy and Maggie returned to the camp, a group of local residents also came by. They were there to thank Jimmy for his vigilantism and for saving the children. It seemed that as long as one had a kind heart, even those with disabilities could earn people's respect. A little girl even presented a cake she had made herself. The residents shook hands with the freaks, one by one, bringing genuine joy to Jimmy. They also decided to watch a freak show, and as everyone was busily preparing, another visitor arrived. It was Stanley, now impersonating a Hollywood talent scout, claiming he specialized in discovering hidden stars. This was exactly Elsa's weakness. Elsa told him that he could enter for free and make sure to pay extra attention to her later. Dandy returned home wearing a mask. The butler was startled and asked why he was acting like a fool again and told him to get lost. This time, without hesitation, Dandy stabbed the butler to death, a satisfied smile on his face. The scene shifted to Maggie bumping into her partner Stanley. It turned out that Stanley was there to help Maggie quickly dispose of a few freaks to make some money. But Maggie was already falling for Jimmy and couldn't bring herself to do it. Later, Dandy's mother discovered the butler's body and knew it was her son's doing. She scolded him, who pretended to be innocent but left the house with a smile on his face. Since the clown had died, the curfew was lifted, and the freak show started again, this time a night performance, which hadn't been full for a long time. This made everyone very nervous. At this critical moment, the strongman mysteriously disappeared. Jimmy went to look for him, but not only did he fail to find him, he also encountered Desiree, who was bleeding profusely. With a blood-streaked face, Bearded Lady took Desiree from Jimmy's hands and urged him to get on stage quickly. Jimmy then announced a program name and left. Elsa sang a song afterward, but it was met with boos and people throwing garbage at her old body, which deeply wounded her pride. Elsa asked Stanley if she could still become a star, and Stanley encouraged her not to lose heart, suggesting she could consider TV shows. At the doctor's, he told Desiree not to worry, explaining it was just her period and that she was not intersex but wholly female, albeit with some parts slightly enlarged. If she agreed, the doctor offered to perform a minor surgery, after which she could live confidently as a woman. The scene shifts to Dandy's mother instructing the workers to dig a hole in the yard, claiming she wants to plant some flowers. In reality, the two of them bury the butler's corpse beneath it. Dandy told his mother if she had just agreed to let him be an actor from the start, he wouldn't have had to kill anyone. He just needed to express himself. After that, he dresses up and then heads to a gay bar. The strong man is there, too. It turns out he's also gay and is confessing his feelings to a pretty boy who isn't interested in his muscles. The rejection leaves the strong man dejected, and he walks away. Soon after, Dandy arrives and asks what his price is. After the pretty boy tells him the price and options, Dandy takes the pretty boy to the clown's lair, where he brutally kills and dismembers him. The next day, Elsa drives into town with the conjoined twins, claiming she's getting them new clothes and rehearsing a new act. But instead, she heads towards Dandy's house. At the same time, the strong man visits the doctor and threatens him not to perform surgery on Desiree. He fears that if Desiree becomes a true woman through surgery, no one will want him. The strong man breaks the doctor's fingers, effectively ending the doctor's surgical career. Elsa knocks on Dandy's door and asks him if he wants the conjoined twins because she can sell them to him. And so the twins are sold just like that. 
Dandy is the happiest of all, directly proposing to marry both Bette and Dot. The next day, when Elsa returns, it happens to be her birthday. Everyone gives her lots of gifts, which makes her very happy. However, she notices that people don't seem very enthusiastic, so she asks what's wrong. Jimmy says it's because the conjoined twins left without saying goodbye. Elsa glares and stops him from mentioning those two ungrateful people who left without even a fart. This is clearly a lie from Elsa. Shorthand had an affair with Elsa in the past, but then fell in love with someone else, a fully-limbed normal woman called Penny. The two were about to get intimate when Penny's father walks in. Shorthand quickly hides under the bed. Penny's father severely reprimands her, and it's evident from his words that he is exceptionally strict with her, verging on the edge of paranoia. The conjoined twins are well cared for by Dandy, with Dot even starting to fall for him. Bet, clear-minded as a mirror, knows that Dandy must have some ulterior motive for treating them so well. One day, Dandy reads a news article about the first successful separation surgery on conjoined twins. Although one of them died, the other survived perfectly. Upon hearing this, Bet realizes that with Dandy's wealth, they could easily afford the separation surgery. One day, Shorthand planned to buy a bottle of perfume for Penny in the store when he coincidentally bumped into Dandy shopping for the conjoined twins. He noticed Dandy was buying everything in pairs and shared this observation with Jimmy. After discussing it, they both suspected that Elsa, concerned about the conjoined twins overshadowing her, had intentionally sold them to Dandy. Later that night, Maggie and Stanley met again. Stanley urged Maggie to take quick action and kill some of the deformed people. Shorthand confronted Elsa, demanding to know where the conjoined twins had been taken, accusing her of deceit. Elsa lashed out, calling them an ungrateful lot and ordering them to gather everyone around. When all were present, she claimed she had rescued them from utter despair, yet they repaid her with distrust, questioning if they saw her as a vile villain. Jimmy asked her to calm down, assuring her of their trust. Inflamed with anger, Elsa challenged them to prove their trust. Bearded Lady agreed and asked how they could prove it. Elsa demanded someone volunteer for the spinning wheel so she could throw knives to prove their trust. Shorthand bravely volunteered, saying she didn't mind where the knives fell. But after being tied up, the third knife hit Shorthand's left abdomen, which appeared suspiciously intentional. Elsa then said she would find a doctor immediately. Meanwhile, Penny planned to sneak out at night to meet with Shorthand, but her father caught her. To her shock, he pointed a gun at her and ordered her back inside. Penny declared she wouldn't endure his oppression any longer and dared him to shoot before storming out. Maggie had also deceived the mini-girl, promising to show her something fun. Without much thought, the mini-girl followed and ended up in a giant glass jar, as Maggie planned to preserve her in formalin as a specimen. Inside the caravan, Shorthand was barely clinging to life. Elsa came over and said that she didn't get a doctor because he deserved to die. She had known for a while that he had been fooling around with other women behind her back due to his cheap perfume smell. Just as she finished speaking, Penny came running over, heartbroken at the sight of Shorthand. She asked Elsa where the doctor was, to which Elsa replied that she didn't know. The doctor never arrived, not even by the next day. Meanwhile, Maggie had returned with the mini-girl in her arms, seemingly not as heartless as to harm her. Maggie then proposed to Jimmy that they elope. As long as she was with him, she didn't care where they went. The two sealed their love with a kiss, but without using their juicy tongues. Jimmy agreed, but mentioned he still had one more thing to do. The scene shifts to Dandy, who was weeping bitterly at home. His mother, puzzled, asked him why he was crying. It turned out he had secretly read Beth's diary and discovered she had been silently enduring her situation while saving money for a separation surgery. Dandy's mother suggested buying something for Dot to make Bet jealous, thinking it might make her fall in love with Dandy. Furious, Dandy exclaimed that love can't be bought. He took a short sword out of his toy box and told his mother that he finally understood his purpose in life, to bring death. He then tucked the sword into his waistband before walking out the front door. Just then, Jimmy arrived, intending to find out if the conjoined twins had indeed been sold to this place by Elsa. He made his way to Dandy's house and began to speak. Jimmy indeed encountered the conjoined twins there. He asked them if they had been mistreated at this place. Dot replied that far from being mistreated, they were well taken care of, with plenty of good food and drink. Dandy was a good person who had saved a child from being captured by the clown. He was also at the scene that day. Hearing this, Jimmy felt a chill in his heart, realizing that the clown from that night was Dandy. Jimmy insisted they leave with him immediately. But Dandy pleaded with Dot not to go, confessing his affection for her and asking her to live with him. But Dot said she also wanted to live with him, but she had to listen to her sister. 
so the conjoined twins left with Jimmy, leaving Dandy in frustration. Back at the circus, Jimmy confronted Elsa, demanding to know why she lied to everyone. The conjoined twins hadn't run away. She had sold them. Elsa was at a loss for words, but Bet interjected, saying there was a misunderstanding. Elsa hadn't sold them. They wanted to experience the lavish lifestyle of the wealthy. Elsa, caught off guard but realizing the twins were giving her an out, was momentarily speechless. The scene shifts to Desiree, who, with the support of Bearded Lady, arrives at the clinic for the scheduled gender reassignment surgery. To their dismay, they found a sign on the clinic door announcing it was closed. Inside, they met the doctor's daughter, who told them her father had ended his own life. She said it was because of treating people with deformities that he began to question life itself. He had smashed his own hands with a hammer before taking his life with a gun. The doctor's daughter angrily turned the pair away. In the circus, Stanley said to the strong man that he saw him confessing his love to a pretty boy at a gay bar. Upon hearing this, the strong man raised his hammer in anger. But Stanley suggested a deal. If the strong man could provide him with the bodies of deformed people, he would keep his secret. Otherwise, he would ruin his reputation. He gave the strong man one day to decide. Elsewhere, Jimmy and Maggie are entwined in bed. Maggie suggests they run away before dawn, when they won't be noticed. Jimmy asks her to wait, feeling that Dandy was the clown that tried to kill her that night. He wants to expose Dandy. Maggie questions why he cares so much about these matters, but Jimmy insists that justice must be served. That night, the strongman plans to start with Tall Lady, but the ether has no effect on her. A fight breaks out, and they wrestle their muscles. Tall Lady quickly overpowers the strongman, leaving him beaten to a pulp before throwing him out of the Ferrari wagon, scornfully calling him a weakling rather than a strongman, and threatening to kill him if he comes back. The next day, everyone learns about the incident. They assume the strongman tried to assault Tall Lady. Bearded Lady is furious and suggests they should kill the strongman. Everyone agrees, except for Jimmy, who is asked to lure the strongman. Jimmy approaches the strongman, asking for a private talk. The strongman agrees, suggesting they go to town for a drink. His real intention is to kill Jimmy as a favor to Stanley for his collections. Inside the tent, Elsa asks Bet why she covered for her. Bet says they need money for surgery and they want 50% of the box office revenue from now on. Elsa is shocked by their bold demand. The scene shifts again to the town, where the strong man and Jimmy are drinking and chatting. They discuss the pain of being freaks, like Jimmy's lobster hands, which force him to always wear thick gloves. The strong man tells him to take them off. There's nothing to be ashamed of, and he'd crush the head of anyone who dared look at him strangely. As they talk, they grow happier, and Jimmy ends up drunk, vomiting in an alley. The strong man picks up a brick, planning to ambush Jimmy. But at that moment, Jimmy turns and asks if the strong man is his father from the famous lobster family, the only one in America. He wonders why the strong man doesn't have the trait, but is sure he is his son. The strong man admits the truth, drops the brick, and they have an emotional father-son recognition. Jimmy warns his dad that his mother and her group are plotting to kill him. The strong man says he'll figure something out. They stagger back to the camp, singing. At the camp, the strong man announces that Jimmy is his son and that the lobster family will take control here. After a moment of agreement, the strong man slaps Jimmy to the ground. After helping his son to bed, the strong man encounters Stanley, who suggests their deal is over and threatens to reveal the strong man's secret. After returning from the circus, Penny tells his dad that she is moving out now to live with shorthand, and he has to kill her if he wants to stop her. Penny's father responds by saying he has invited a friend over to see her off. The friend, his father mentioned, is a tattoo artist. Later, Penny wakes up from anesthesia, feeling a sharp pain on her face. Looking in the mirror, she sees her face has been completely ruined by the tattoo artist his dad found. She's been given a ridiculous hairstyle and even her tongue has been split. Penny almost passes out from the shock. That day, Elsa secretly slips a letter to Bet. Taking advantage of Dot's slumber, Bet stealthily reads the letter. It asks why she is in such urgent need of money. Bet's reply reaches Elsa quickly saying that she wants to undergo separation surgery for conjoined twins and that Elsa needs to help her find the doctor from the newspaper article who performs this surgery. If Elsa does this, she won't expose her secret. Elsa seeks out Stanley and informs him of Bet's desire to have the separation surgery. She gives him the doctor's address, asking him to contact this doctor in Chicago. Then they can send the conjoined girls to Chicago and the twins will be out of her life for good. Stanley suggests they don't need a doctor and instead proposes they relieve the girls of their pain permanently, implying the twins should be killed. Bearded Lady, who happens to come in to deliver water, overhears this. 
The next day, to prevent the conjoined twins from being murdered by Elsa, Bearded Lady hides them away. In the dead of night, the strong man visits the mini girl's tent, deceiving her with the offer of a beautiful dress. Since clothes for many persons are hard to come by, she's thrilled. But to her horror, the strong man picks her up and strangles her to death, completing his deal with Stanley. Meanwhile, Penny arrives at Shorthand's tent, asking if he will still accept her since she has also become a freak now. Shorthand is overwhelmed with grief and embraces Penny tightly, but without letting go of their hormones. The next day, the mini girl's remains were displayed at the Freak Museum, attracting quite a crowd of onlookers. The scene shifts. Dandy's mother tells the psychologist that there's no hope for her son. Physically, he's fine, but he's mentally deformed. One day, he showed up covered in blood. God knows what he did. The psychologist asked her to bring her son to him for a check, unaware of its danger. The following day, the circus began an intense search for the mini girl. In the end, they only found her blood-stained clothes in the woods. But everyone assumed she had been devoured by wild animals. Bearded Lady went to Elsa's tent, suspecting she killed the mini-girl after overhearing her plot with Stanley to murder the conjoined twins. Besides, the mini-girl was too weak to fight back. Elsa became furious upon hearing the accusation. Unexpectedly, Bearded Lady pulled out a gun, intending to eliminate her as a menace to society. Elsa revealed her legs were sawed off, and it's an American soldier named Massimo who fitted her with prosthetics, so she followed him to America. Bearded Lady said she never mentioned this before. Elsa replied that it's her shame. That's why she usually doesn't tell anyone. Elsa then asked her to put down the gun now that she had shared her deepest secret. However, Bearded Lady was convinced Elsa was the murderer and prepared to pull the trigger. Elsa, quicker to act, ended Bearded Lady's beardy life with a throwing knife. Soon after, Bearded Lady's body was found in a car in the woods, headless. It turned out that Elsa and Stanley conspired to stage Bearded Lady's death as a suicide, making it seem as if she had chained her head and then floored the accelerator to decapitate herself. But who would choose such a brutal way to commit suicide? The others had yet to suspect anything. Meanwhile, Dandy's mother was confronted at her home by the daughter of the butler he had killed. The daughter demanded to see her mother, complaining that her calls went unanswered, so she decided to come over. The woman lied that her mother went on a long trip to buy groceries, but the daughter replied she would wait here. With Bearded Lady's death, Jimmy was heartbroken. After burying Bearded Lady, Desiree remarked that being a woman is really tough. Penny agreed, saying she knew all too well. Desiree continued saying if she were Penny, she would never endure such a cruel father. He must pay the price. She then proposed to help her with that. Inside Dandy's residence, the butler's daughter endlessly waited for her mother's return, but to no avail. Dandy asked his mom what they should do now, since they can't keep this hidden. Maybe they should just kill the daughter and be done with it. The scene switches. The trio bent on revenge knocked Penny's dad unconscious, then took him and tortured him half to death with scorching tar. Originally, they intended to kill Penny's dad, but Maggie's pleas swayed them, and they ultimately spared his life. Back at Dandy's, his mother urged him to see a psychologist. To him, taking a life was as easy as snuffing out an ant. But Dandy declared that no one could cure him and that he'd be better off dead. As he was about to kill himself, his mother begged him not to, saying that if he dies, she won't want to live either. Dandy then changed his mind and fatally shot his mother. This was utter psychological deformation. Jimmy couldn't recover from the pain of losing his mother, drowning his sorrows in alcohol day after day. Maggie advised him to accept his loss and move on, reminding him that he was a leader. In response, he lashed out at her, accusing her of understanding nothing, and they parted ways. Elsewhere, Elsa and Stanley found a note in the tent of the now-deceased bearded lady, detailing where the conjoined twins were hidden. With this information, Elsa and Stanley approached the twins with a deceptive promise, saying that their dreams were about to come true and they had found a doctor who could perform the separation surgery. Bet was overjoyed, while Dot was deeply saddened. At this time, a bearded man arrived at the circus, drawn by Desiree's reputation. They fell in love at first sight. Later, Dandy arrived at a place filled with girls. Pretending to be a wealthy and handsome man just passing by, his car broke down and he sought shelter for the night. The girls, charmed by his dashing looks and sweet talk, were happy to oblige and let him stay. Elsa and Stanley lured the conjoined twins to a cabin, instructing them to wait there for the doctor to come for the surgery. Bet was puzzled, wondering if they were really going to have the surgery here. Elsa remembered asking Stanley a few days earlier whether they were really going to kill the twins. She said they just need to chase the twins away so they don't steal her limelight. 
but Stanley assured her that he had a friend in Hollywood who had contacted the doctor, and she didn't have to worry about anything if the separation was successful because a person with one head wouldn't steal her limelight. He promised her he would take her to California to further her career. Stanley then told the conjoined twins that they would be taken to the hospital at night for a secret surgery and promised that both would survive. Bet was particularly happy, saying there were no more worries. Dot was stunned, thinking her sister was out of her mind since they only had two legs. But Bet didn't care because this was what she had always dreamed of. In reality, there was no doctor. It was all part of Stanley's plan to kill the conjoined twins for money. The next day, a man arrived at the house where Dandy had been the day before, filled with girls. He found that all the girls were dead, the swimming pool stained with blood, obviously the work of Dandy. When Dandy returned home, preparing for a bloodbath, the butler's daughter showed up, asking if her mother had returned. Dandy bluntly told her he had killed her mom, and not just her mom, but his too. He then asked her to join him for a bath. Since the girl and Dandy had grown up together, Dandy didn't kill her, but told her to get lost. Then he roamed around the house naked, yelling out phrases like, I am a god! In the evening, Dot asked Bet what's the point of separating since they were born as one. She would rather die so that Bet could have a new life instead of both of them living a half-life. Bet was deeply moved, never expecting her sister would be willing to sacrifice her life for her own dream. The scene shifts. The strong man was writing his will in the tent, preparing to take his own life. He recalled the deal he made with Stanley, which involved giving the mini-girl's body to Stanley. It turned out that Stanley was also deformed, but in an indescribable way, which explained his obsession with collecting the deformed. The main reason the strong man decided to end his life was the guilt of having killed the mini-girl. But just as he was about to die, Desiree appeared and saved him. Meanwhile, Stanley even found a fake doctor to continue deceiving the conjoined twins. That day, the butler's daughter brought the police to Dandy's door. She accused him of killing both of their mothers. Dandy admitted that they were dead and killed by him. So the girl urged the police to arrest him fast, saying that he must have killed many others. But Dandy still boasted that he was sure to get off scot-free because he was rich. His family's wealth could buy a small country. Plus, he was a god now, with the right to judge and no one could top him. The officer reached for his gun, saying he'd better stop talking because he was digging his own grave. But Dandy advised the police to dig a grave for the girl and he would give him a million dollars in cash. Upon hearing this, the officer shot and killed the butler's daughter, ending her greasy life. Meanwhile, Jimmy was still drowning his sorrows daily, staggering back to his tent. It was only when he saw the conjoined twins return that he realized he hadn't seen them for the past couple of days. Bet confessed that she used to think that separating from her sister would give her a beautiful life, but now she had realized that they were family and should stay together. So she had decided against the separation surgery. Bet then took Jimmy's hand and placed it on her sexy face, saying he didn't have to be so miserable. And since she arrived at the freak show, she had fallen in love with him. She revealed that part of the reason she wanted the surgery was for Jimmy. As she began to undress, intending to become one with Jimmy, he was taken aback and asked Bet's twin sister if she was okay with this, since it was also her body. Dot responded that she supported her sister, encouraging the two to do whatever they want. This sobered Jimmy up instantly, and he said he couldn't do this because he was already in love with Maggie. At that moment, the police came to arrest Jimmy. It turns out he had been framed by Dandy, accused of killing the girls in the swimming pool. No matter how much Maggie tried to explain, it was useless. The police forcibly took Jimmy away. After the incident, there was another significant event occurring in the circus. One of the freaks named Pepper was devastated by the death of her partner. In the tent, Stanley approached Elsa, volunteering to help bury Pepper's partner and promising to place his ashes in a jeweled urn. Elsa agreed, unaware that Stanley would immediately sever Pepper's partner's head and send it straight to a museum for display, as money was his only concern. Elsa then told Desiree about Pepper's backstory. Pepper was the first freak recruited by Elsa when she planned to start the freak show. Under Elsa's guidance and care, Pepper learned how to coexist with people. Being female, she gradually developed a sense of maternal affection, which was fulfilled when the mini-girl arrived. Soon after, Pepper felt the need for a partner, and Elsa searched far and wide, finding a deformed man with a similar condition. They fell in love at first sight and were married successfully. After hearing the story, Desiree suggested that Elsa find Pepper's family since she was now an adult and should be able to take care of herself. Elsa agreed, saying she was about to head to Hollywood, and before she goes, she needs to make sure all of them are settled. 
In the evening, Desiree, accompanied by the bearded man, sought out Maggie to have their fortunes told. Maggie, putting on a show, began her divination and declared that the two of them would marry, have children, and lead a blissful life. However, seeing their sweet affection, Maggie felt a sudden pang of discontent. So with a change of tone, she warned that one day everything would take a turn for the worse. They would start to have conflicts and eventually divorce, leading to a life in shambles. Desiree was naturally disheartened and left cursing under her breath. Alone, Maggie sullenly drank her liquor until Desiree returned, demanding to know what she meant earlier. Maggie confessed that the man she loved was in prison, and she felt helpless, admitting her jealousy of their happiness. She revealed that she wasn't really a fortune teller and that Stanley was not a Hollywood scout either. Desiree, taken aback, asked then what he was. Maggie bluntly labeled him a fraud. Back at the tent, the conjoined twins had been waiting for a long time. They planned to give all their savings to Maggie so she could bail out Jimmy. Meanwhile, Stanley visited the prison and advised Jimmy to hire a lawyer, assuring him it would be fine. Jimmy responded that he had no money. Stanley then suggested he had an idea that could help him raise the funds by selling his lobster hands. The next day, Maggie found Desiree again and divulged a secret, urging her to believe her or else everyone in the camp would die. She beckoned Desiree to follow her. The scene shifts. Elsa entrusts Pepper to her older sister, then leaves with a heavy heart. From that moment on, Pepper's fate takes a new turn. Maggie leads Desiree to the Freak Museum, where Desiree is heartbroken to see the exhibits, especially upon discovering the head of Pepper's partner. As the museum curator unveils a new exhibit, Maggie steps closer out of curiosity, only to find it is Jimmy's lobster hands. She faints on the spot. In another scene, Pepper's sister is conversing with the nun from the Briarcliff Asylum. It turns out she wants to admit Pepper for treatment. The nun says they only take criminals, and upon being asked what crime Pepper has committed, her sister chillingly admits to murder. As shown in a flashback, Pepper moved in with her sister. Though her sister was somewhat helpless about the situation, she was still Pepper's relative in name and was duty-bound to look after her. Life was going on uneventfully until the sister gave birth to a child. With the child's arrival, chaos ensued. The couple, not fond of children, essentially left Pepper in charge of the newborn. Pepper had to serve her sister as well, and over time, inevitably her care was lacking. She often faced a barrage of scolding from her sister. The husband was even more direct, declaring that both the child and Pepper should disappear. The sister couldn't bring herself to kill Pepper, but her husband had a plan to kill his own child and frame Pepper. Born with deformities and a bit slow, Pepper was easily presumed guilty by the police without much thought and was thus taken away by the Briarcliff Asylum. Back to the present, after chopping off Jimmy's hands, Stanley fulfills his promise. Upon waking, Jimmy curses, having been told only one hand would be cut off and now both were gone. He laments how he will manage in the restroom or let go of his hormones. On this day, a salesman named Chester arrives at the circus. He travels while selling circus equipment. The moment he sees the conjoined twins, he falls in love with them. But in his eyes, Dot and Bet are different women, which will be revealed later. Chester, a former soldier who participated in the Normandy landings, was injured by accident, leaving a small piece of metal in his head, which caused him mental issues. Afterward, the strong man visits his son Jimmy, and seeing him without hands, he is filled with sorrow and rage. Upon learning that Stanley is responsible and that his son has been deceived, the strong man is anguished. Chester quickly grows fond of the place and seeks a job from Elsa. Whether it was performing magic or ventriloquism, Elsa said no. Undeterred, Chester suggests standing at the door selling lizards for a substantial profit, showing Elsa his notebook of calculations. Impressed by Chester's business acumen, Elsa hires him as an accountant and to participate in some warm-up performances. As Chester is mentally ill, he carries a puppet with him, which he believes to be a living person. The strong man approaches Elsa's tent, pleading with her to save Jimmy. Elsa is willing to help the strong man, so in the dead of night, they hijack the police car transporting Jimmy, not only killing the police officers, but also rescuing Jimmy. The conjoined sisters were deeply drawn to Chester, seeing him as a handsome and talented gentleman. They took the initiative to approach him, and a natural connection formed between the three of them. However, afterward, Chester would talk to his puppet, claiming this time was different, that he really had feelings for the conjoined sisters. In his mind, the puppet threatened to expose his secrets if he locked it away. It was revealed that Chester had a wife, and one day, a friend of his wife, unable to tolerate his odd behavior and constant self-conversations with the puppet, threw the cherished puppet away. 
She berated him for still wearing his military uniform after the war and talking to the puppet, effectively calling him a fool. This enraged Chester, who told her he'd turned a blind eye to her affair with his wife, but forbade her from disposing of his puppet. At that moment, Chester saw a plump woman in red in the corridor. She was the puppet to him, not a real person. The puppet lady claimed that this woman was an obstacle to their union and must be eliminated, along with his wife. Back in reality, Elsa signed a sales agreement with Chester, selling the entire freak show to him for 1,000 as she planned to pursue opportunities in Hollywood. Chester, thrilled with the deal, intended to share the good news with his puppet lady, only to find the puppet missing. Suddenly, police arrived to search for the whereabouts of Jimmy. Chester came out to greet them, saying it was good they had come, for they needed to issue a missing person alert for his puppet lady. The police dismissed him and continued their search throughout the tent. Chester, seeing the police's disinterest in his concern, went to look for his puppet himself and encountered Dandy, who claimed to know where the puppet lady was. Dandy had known about the puppet because he and the police had been investigating Chester under the delusion of the puppet lady had killed his wife and her friend. But he believed the puppet lady was the murderer. Dandy revealed that the puppet was on the theater stage, hinting that he was the one who had taken the puppet. Chester indeed found the puppet in the theater. The puppet told him that if he didn't kill the conjoined sisters, it wouldn't return with him. The scene shifted, and Maggie appeared in Elsa's tent, revealing the truth about how the minigirl had died. Meanwhile, Desiree confronted the strongman, pressing him to confess how the minigirl met her end. Under duress and the threats from Stanley, the strongman admitted to reluctantly smothering the minigirl. As soon as he finished speaking, Elsa shot him dead, avenging the minigirl. Then the group tricked Stanley into coming over and brutally killed him without mercy. Before dying, Stanley claimed Elsa was responsible for Bearded Lady's death, but in their anger, everyone dismissed his words as a desperate attempt to exonerate himself. No one believed him. The next day, the news of the strong man's death reached Jimmy. In a span of a few days, he had lost both his parents and suffered the tragedy of having both his hands chopped off. It was a pitiful and lamentable situation. As Maggie was changing Jimmy's bandages, she expressed her desire to reconcile, but Jimmy refused, blaming her and Stanley's arrival for the circus's downfall. Another man arrived that day. It's Massimo, the one who had fitted Elsa with prosthetic legs. Meanwhile, the others, having calmed down, reanalyzed Bearded Lady's death. After piecing together Stanley's words, they also concluded that Elsa must have been the murderer, so they unanimously agreed on their next move, to kill Elsa. Elsa introduced Massimo to Jimmy to make him a pair of prosthetic hands. Jimmy asked why the two of them didn't end up together, and Massimo began their story. It turns out, as World War II neared its end and Germany was being overtaken, they fled the country amidst the chaos. But before leaving, Massimo decided to avenge Elsa, hunting down and executing each member of the organization that had sawed off her legs. However, when he went to deal with the leader, things went awry. The leader turned and shot Massimo, then tortured him mercilessly after capturing him. After Germany's defeat, the leader, being a Nazi, fled away and ended up in the same Briarcliff Asylum, becoming the doctor who conducted zombie experiments. Massimo didn't die. He escaped and had been searching for Elsa ever since. In another scene, Chester was planning to perform the ultimate magic trick, a sawing act featuring live assistants. He intended to use the conjoined sisters as his assistants and planned to saw them in half, standing up to pioneer a new era of magic. The conjoined sisters were terrified and flatly refused to participate, eventually leaving the scene. At that moment, Maggie stepped forward, claiming she knew the trick well and offered to be his assistant. And indeed, the trick went horribly wrong, causing Maggie to be killed unexpectedly. Everyone gaped at Chester as he reassured them that it's just magic and he will bring her back. But when they realized the trick was irreversible, they were baffled. Without any choice, Chester pointed at the puppet and blamed it, saying it's the puppet who forced him to do it. The others were confused because they could see there's no one there. After Chester left, Desiree remarked that Maggie got what she deserved as she had planned to kill all of them. Chester returned to his tent, furiously confronting the imaginary puppet, accusing it of causing trouble. He then stabbed the puppet lady to death in a fit of rage. That night, the conjoined sisters sneaked into Elsa's tent to warn her about the plot to kill her and urged her to run away. Stunned, Elsa replied that there's nowhere in the world for her to hide. Bet responded indifferently, saying she didn't care, and they were even now. After Elsa's escape, the rest of the troop couldn't find her. She found Dandy for the freak show, selling it to him for 10000 Chester, covered in blood and holding the puppet, turned himself into the police station, claiming he had accidentally killed someone. 
The police, upon opening the bag and seeing only a puppet, concluded that he must be a fool. The next day, Dandy, with a contract in hand, announced that from now on, they all work for him and they need to follow his orders. The troop was stunned, wondering about Elsa's whereabouts. Dandy revealed that she's gone to Hollywood to chase her dreams and then began to tour the place. In the next scene, Jimmy sought out Massimo, who fitted him with a pair of prosthetic hands, surprisingly in the shape of lobster claws. Jimmy was very pleased with them. Dandy had the troupe's promotional posters put up, and they rehearsed diligently, preparing to showcase their singing talents that evening. However, when they returned and asked about ticket sales, they learned that not a single ticket had been sold. Dandy was furious, berating them for their incompetence. Unable to tolerate it any longer, the troupe all turned on him, beating him and holding him down to teach him a lesson. Elsewhere, Elsa fled all the way to a towering building in Hollywood and approached the reception desk, asking to see someone who she assumed was the president or someone of similar rank. The receptionist informed her that without an appointment, she wouldn't be able to meet him. Elsa insisted she would wait there until she could, but after a whole day of waiting, with everyone having left for the day, she still hadn't seen the president. When Elsa questioned the receptionist, she was infuriated to learn that the president had intentionally left through the back door to avoid her. In a fit of anger, Elsa slapped the receptionist. Just as security was about to escort her out, a man appeared. He was the deputy director of the casting department who decided to help Elsa. The next day, Dandy applied light makeup, armed himself with a gun, and returned to the circus. Without hesitation, he began a killing spree. Shorthand, Penny, the dwarf, and Tall Lady were all successively murdered. Desiree hid and was not found, thus surviving the slaughter. Dandy then kidnapped the conjoined sisters and took them back. After the massacre, Jimmy returned to find a scene of carnage. Desiree appeared, and the two wept together over the bodies. Sometime later, surprisingly, Dandy had married the conjoined sister, Bet, who seemed genuinely happy. However, during the wedding banquet, Dandy suddenly felt dizzy. Apparently, the conjoined sister had drugged him. They had pretended to be willing to marry Dandy as part of their plan for revenge. Desiree and Jimmy were also in on it. Together, they kidnapped Dandy and brought him back to the circus, trapping him in a huge glass tank. Desiree taunted him by ordering him to perform an underwater escape for them. Dandy was confused, saying he was a singer and dancer, not a magician. Jimmy angrily retorted that he's a murderer. Desiree added that people think freaks are destined to end up pickled in jars, on display for crowds to gawk at and feel better about themselves. She could accept the fate, but she claimed that Dandy is the most deformed psychopath of all, telling him to wait for his death. In the end, like spectators at a grand play, they watched as Dandy met his gruesome death. Time swiftly moved on to the year 1960. To everyone's surprise, Elsa, through her own efforts, had truly become a star. She was a celebrity on a trendy talk show on television and even had her own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. But beneath the glamorous facade, she was far from happy. First of all, she had no friends. Secondly, although she was married to the deputy director, he had been unfaithful to her, secretly seeing another woman. Elsa, in turn, had her own secret affair with a younger, handsome man. The two of them were constantly in a state of cold war. One day, the deputy director brought a vice president of a broadcasting company to talk to Elsa about performing on Halloween. Elsa immediately refused, saying she would not perform on Halloween. If a person with deformities performs on that day, it could summon the ghost of Edward. The next day, an old friend Massimo came to visit. Elsa explained why she had left without saying goodbye and asked what Massimo had been up to in the intervening years. Massimo spoke of his life and how he had come to terms with his situation. Without hiding anything, Elsa shared her loneliness and even expressed a willingness to give up her career and elope with Massimo, saying he was her only real family. Massimo, however, revealed that he had cancer and had only one month left to live. He had come to say goodbye. Elsa was left in silent tears, resigned to the fate of dying alone. In the evening, the president found Elsa and told her that someone had discovered the snuff film she had shot in the past. Her career might be over, and there was something else she might not know. After she had left, everyone from the freak show she had started had died. Elsa felt as if her heart was being pierced by a thousand knives, but she calmly requested to allow her to perform one last time on Halloween. Halloween soon arrived and Elsa got her wish. She sang a song that was broadcast live around the world. At the same time, Desiree and the bearded man got married and had two children, living a life of immense happiness. They saw Elsa's performance in a store and felt happy for her, unaware of the pain she was enduring. 
Simultaneously, Jimmy and Bette got married and the conjoined sisters were pregnant. The three of them were also living a very happy life. Just then, Ghost Edward was summoned. Upon seeing her, he knew that Elsa must have wanted to end her own life. Aside from Elsa, no one else could see Edward. With a single thrust of his knife, Edward ended Elsa's life, but told her that she shouldn't join his ghostly band of freaks. Although Elsa died, her soul returned home. She not only went back to the freak show, but also saw her former friends, the deformed people who had passed away. Elsa was content staying with her old friends. This was the life she had always desired. And with that, the drama comes to a close. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.